Hi guys, so now we're starting on with the nervous system, starting with a lecture on the neuron. This is the first of the three um, neuron lectures. The first one, to the one I'm going over now, I'm going to go over the reflex arcs. We'll talk about different types of neurons. We'll also do a little bit of anatomy review before we move on. And then we'll also be talking about the resting membrane potential. And then in the second movie, I'll talk about graded and action potentials. We'll talk about how they're the same and how they're different and where each one is found. And then we'll move on to signal conduction. Conduction means moving the signal along the axons. And then synapses. Synapses are where the neuron communicates with another, um, with another cell, either another neuron or another muscle cell or something like that. Okay, so let's get into the general functions of the nervous system. So remember when we think when we think of the nervous system, we think, oh, brain, it's for thinking. But remember, it's really about your connection with the external world. Sensory input goes into the, the central nervous system, then the central nervous system processes that information, integrates it with what you already know, and then sends out some sort of response. The response that comes out, that would be a motor response. So we have sensory information in and then a motor response out. And all of this helps coordinate and create that internal environment to help maintain that homeostasis. So today we'll talk about different neurons. And this is, most of you have already heard this for anatomy, but if not, let's talk about the different classification, the different functional classifications for neurons. Functional classifications, what we're really talking about is where's the information being sent. We have sensory neurons that bring information about the external environment towards the central nervous system. Then we have interneurons. Inter means between. So interneurons are going to be found entirely within the central nervous system. Those are used for processing and integrating the, the information with other areas of the central nervous system. And then we have motor neurons, which bring information away from the central nervous system towards effector cells, such as a skeletal muscle or a gland or those kinds of things. So sensory information will go inside. And so sensory information towards the central nervous system Motor, motor neurons bring information away from the central nervous system. And so we can look at a reflex arc. So what is a reflex? Generally, when people think reflex, they think of it's a quick response. And the reason it's a quick involuntary response is because you, it's a very simplified version of what we already looked at. We're going to take sensory information in, and then that's going to create an immediate reaction. So we have a motor response out. Okay, so we have sensory neuron bringing information towards the central nervous system. Remember that the central, that, sorry, that the spinal cord is part of the central nervous system. That'll then either synapse directly with a motor neuron, or sometimes it'll synapse with an interneuron here. And then that'll take the information out. The motor neuron brings that information out and synapses or connects or talks to another type of cell, which would be the effector cell. So sensory, interneuron, and motor neuron out. It's very quick because you only have three little neurons interacting with each other. Now, often, and you're gonna see in lab that this is the case for the stretch reflexes, sometimes you don't even have the interneuron and the sensory neurons synapse directly with the motor neurons and that's how you get a very quick response. So sensory information in, motor out. So you might wanna go ahead and do the, um, the what, what are they called? Yes, I remember. the. Lab seven, part A, which has to do with reflexes, and that's what we're talking about there. So now let's look on, just to do a little bit of anatomy review and look at neuron structures. So here we have a neuron, this is a multipolar neuron. In purple here, that is the cell body, and the cell body includes the nucleus, which is right here. 
coming off of the nucleus, you have several processes. You have the shorter processes that are all over in, in blue here, those are called dendrites. And then you have one longer, more distinct process that's called the axon. The very beginning of the axon is called the axon hillock. Axon hillock. Venus, shh. Okay, so the axon hillock is just this first initial part of the axon. And at the end of the axon, we have the axon terminals. And the axon terminals is where you would synapse or connect with the second cell. So just to sort of summarize all of that, the dendrites receive information from either other cells or from the external stimuli or, and the axon sends the information away. So axon is for moving the information away towards another cell. So dendrites receive, axon send. Okay, so now we're getting to the exciting part. We're gonna talk about how neurons communicate both with other neurons or with other cells, and they do it by creating electrical signals. But before you can create the electrical signal, you need to set the stage to create that electricity. And you do that with resting membrane potential. So we're gonna talk about resting membrane potential in this video, and the next time we'll talk about graded and action potentials. And those are the electrical signals. Okay, so resting membrane potential. Let's start first off with what we mean by membrane potential. That is the relative charge inside of the neuron in comparison to the charge outside of the neuron. So you can measure that with a voltmeter. And a voltmeter, all it does is it measures the inside charge and then grounds it with the outside and that gives you a charge. So one thing I would like you to notice is that a neuron at rest, so just hanging out, doing, being itself, it is going to be a negative internal charge. It usually is around negative 70 millivolts, but don't memorize that number because it does vary by different types of neurons. But I do need you to know that it is more negative inside of the neuron than it is outside of the neuron. And there are several reasons for this. The first is the fact that you have fixed anions. Do you remember what an anion is? An anion is just a molecule of a negative charge, so usually they are negative ions, but they can also include things like proteins. Proteins have a negative charge and they are too big to just enter and exit the cell, so that's why they're called fixed. And they're fixed inside, so they can't leave the cell. And because there are more proteins inside the cell than outside the cell, that helps create that negative environment because they are negative inside of the cell. We also have the sodium potassium pump. Does that sound familiar? Where did we find that before? So the sodium potassium pump, we saw that in the cell transport lecture, and that was an active, so it's a primary active pump, which means it uses ATP. So remember when I say use, it just means take those phosphate group off. It hydrolyzes ATP to pump the, um, these ions against their concentration gradient. Okay, so both the sodium, which is Na, this is sodium, Na, and the potassium, which is K, both of them are going against their concentration gradient. So instead of going from high to low, they're going from low to high. Okay, so we're gonna create very steep concentration gradients for both sodium and for potassium. Okay, so basically you just, it's like a dam. We're building some dams to hold the water back and we're just gonna pump water onto one side and then later we're gonna use that as stored energy to do something else. Now, if you recall from the cell transport lecture, you can use that to couple that to the transport of another molecule. This, what we're talking about now is we're gonna couple this stored energy to create a action potential later, okay? So really, we're just, we're setting the stage so that we have a whole bunch of sodium outside of the cell 
and a whole bunch of potassium inside of the cell. And we're gonna use that later to create action potentials. Okay, so both the sodium and the potassium against the gradient, more sodium outside, more potassium inside. You'll need to know that to understand later. So maybe write that down for sure. Okay, so the other thing I want you to notice is if we're pumping sodium out, we're pumping three sodiums out and two, only two potassiums in. That means we're, we're pumping more positive ions out than we're bringing in. So every time you lose a positive, you become negative. Okay, so losing a positive makes you more negative. And since we're losing more positive than we're bringing in, that also helps to contribute to the negative internal environment. Okay, so that's the second thing. First one was those fixed proteins that are stuck inside the cell, nice and negative. The second one is the sodium potassium itself, the sodium potassium pump itself helps create that imbalance Okay, so you have more, lots of sodium outside, lots of potassium inside, but you're also helping create a little bit more negativity inside, helping to create, to make it a little bit more in, uh, in negative inside because you're bringing out more positive than you're bringing in. Now, that brings us to the third, the third reason it's negative inside, and that is the fact that in that plasma membrane, you have what are called leakage channels. And they're called leakage channels because they are just ion channels, so protein channels embedded in the membrane, and they're always open. And that allows that the sodium and the potassium that you just pumped using the sodium potassium pump to leak out. Now, here's the important part. This is the important part, pay attention. Now, we do have sodium and we do have potassium leakage channels but we have a lot more potassium channels, leakage channels, than we have sodium channels. That means that we are losing a lot of potassium. So we pumped the potassium in using the sodium potassium pump, and now we're losing a lot, we're losing more of this potassium going out than the, the sodium coming back in. Now, if you lose a positive charge, you become more, and this is where the whole class says, negative. <laughs> okay, so loss of a positive charge, so loss of those positive potassium ions cre helps to create a negative internal charge. Now, some of you might say, well, if you, cr if you open the, if you have those leakage channels and the potassium is leaking out, what good is the sodium potassium pump? The sodium potassium pump is very effective at creating those steep concentration gradients. And so even though you're losing some of your potassium using the leakage channels and you're gaining some of the sodium using the leakage channels, you are still doing enough with the sodium potassium pumps to maintain those very steep concentration gradients. Okay, because remember those steep concentration gradients are gonna be used later when you do action potentials. Okay, so let's review. The very first reason why you have a negative internal environment, fixed anions such as large proteins that are stuck inside. The sodium potassium pump itself is imbalanced, so you have three sodium leaving, but you're only bringing two potassiums in. And the third one, and the biggest one, is that you have more potassium leaking through the leakage channels than you are bringing in sodium through the sodium channels, okay? So these are, these are the leakage channels, okay? So another way to explain, another way to say that is that the cell is more permeable to potassium than it is to sodium at this point. Okay, so I just mentioned a bunch of ion channels. So let's take a minute right now and really get this nice and clear. And you might notice that in the PowerPoint, I have not actually included this one. So make sure you take a note of this. There, in this entire process, there are going to be three different types of ion channels. Ion channels are just protein channels embedded in the plasma membrane that allow ions to go through. 
The first type of ion channel are leakage channels, and we have both sodium leakage channels and potassium leakage channels. Those are a type of facilitated diffusion that allow the molecule, the sodium or the potassium, to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. And they're called leakage channels because they are always going to remain open. So they just can't allow a constant leakage of, of potassium out and a little bit of leakage of sodium in. The second type is the sodium potassium pump. And if you see the word pump, that means that it is a type of active primary transport. Active meaning we have to use ATP because we're going in the wrong direction. We're going towards the high concentration instead of away from it. And those are constantly working to help either establish the, the resting membrane potential or to, to come back to it after an action potential. And then the third one, which we have not talked about, which will, will come up later for the action potential, are voltage-gated channels. And again, we have voltage-gated sodium channels and voltage-gated potassium channels. Those are also a type of facilitated diffusion. Those are also going to allow the molecule to move from a high concentration to a low concentration. However, they are not always open. Instead, they're only going to be open at a very specific charge and then close at a very specific charge. That's why they're called voltage gated. Voltage gated means they're only open at a particular charge and then close at a particular charge. Those will come up later for action potential. Okay, so if you didn't get anything else from this, you do need to be able to answer this question. At rest, the neuron's internal charge is positive, negative, or neutral? Negative. It is negative inside of the cell in comparison to outside of the cell. Okay, there we go. Your resting membrane potential. Um, go ahead and move on to the next, next lecture video. We're going to talk about graded potentials and action potentials. See you later.